So there's an awful lot going on, not only in Davos, but around the world in markets. Tell us how you see it from your position running Coca-Cola. How does it affect your business? Well, you know, there's a notion that everything is really, really bad, and it isn't. Um, firstly, um, yes, there's a lot of puts and takes. There's a lot of red and green uh, and amber uh, on the map. Uh, but there, there's a lot of opportunities in the world. A lot of people still are uh, coming into the middle class in Africa, in Asia, in many parts of the world, in Middle East. And so, yeah, I mean, there's un high unemployment, 200 million people unemployed, high youth unemployment. We've got to do something about that. We've got to do more than we're doing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, commodities are very benign for, uh, if you look at it from the perspective of a consumer goods company and how it's impacting the consumer in terms of creating more mobility, you know, lower gasoline prices, all of that, there's some puts and takes. Um, but at the same time, um, yeah, I mean, we need to channel, be much more targeted with our investments. But we are continuing to invest into the downturn when for the long term. When are we going to see those consumers start to spend? When oil's prices start to, started to go down, everyone said, well, those consumers, lower gas prices, they're going to be in a mall, they're going to be at the movies. They haven't shown up. When well, we look at sales across the board, across industries, the consumers aren't spending. So what price does oil need to get at or how long before we see the shift? Well, what we see is mobility in the United States is up compared to 12 months ago, compared to eight months ago. More people are driving, more people are buying, uh, uh, stopping at retail outlets and buying goods at retail, small retail outlets, gas stations and convenience stores and so forth in the United States. And what Coca-Cola product are they buying? Well, they're buying all Coca-Cola products. They're buying anything, uh, they're still beverages, they're buying dairy products, they're buying juices, they're buying Coca-Cola, they're buying Coca-Cola Life, they're buying Coca-Cola Diet Coca-Cola, they're buying Fanta, Sprite. Coca-Cola was a one product, one brand business for 100 years, and we're now in our 129th year, and we have now uh, 550 brands and 3,500 products. So yeah, the consumer wants more choice, and we're giving them choice. But what percentage of those 500 brands is soda? Um, you know, we, we don't give breakout numbers for specific countries, but around 65, 70% uh, sparkling. And the, the key about our business is that the way we uh, look at our business and the way we think about our business is across the world, sparkling beverages in the next 10 years are going to grow, our sparkling brands, and still brands are going to grow. The growth rates may be a little bit different, still brands may be growing a little faster, but at the end of the day, um, we are the largest sparkling beverage company in the world, and we are the largest still beverage company in the world, both. But as you look out, you talked about the United States market. In emerging markets, which markets do you anticipate will grow the most? I think Africa is still growing at about 5.5%, still generating significant middle class every year. Uh, small increments of improvement in governance in African nations are producing exponentially better results in terms of GDP growth rates. We're seeing that. Um, in Latin America, it's a mixed bag. What used to be... what. Uh, the, Great markets uh, like Brazil have slowed down, and what used to be really scary markets like Argentina, there's much more uh, better hope going looking into the future in the next three years in Argentina. And so it's, again, every, the thing about the world is very volatile. Commodities are volatile. Currency is volatile. Growth rates are volatile. So there has to be a much more precision in the way we operate our plan, execute our plan, and we have to be very flexible. You, you, I, I believe I saw an announcement just today that you're making a long-term investment in Argentina, specifically yeah. a large one. And is that in part because of that incremental improvement in governance with Macri coming in? Um, partly to do with that. I mean, we still were going to invest, but not, nothing like that. Yeah. So you're the biggest beverage in still and sparkling, no matter what. I think of it sort of like the United States, the cleanest of the dirty shirts. But what happens when and if your whole sector ends up in a decline? Help us understand your growth potential. The sector is not going to end up decli in decline because it's one of the most dynamic consumer product sectors in the world. It's I the love fast, snacks. It's the <laughs> fastest growing uh, consumer products business in the world. In the, in, in, in the next decade, uh, there's going to be $300 billion in incremental dollars spent by consumers in this in this sector. So, and, and if you look at our opportunity, every house, there's 2 billion households in the world, 2.1 billion. 
Each household consumes per day 26 beverages, all kinds of beverages, hot, cold, sparkling, still, all kinds of beverages, including coffee, including teas. Of those 26, less than two are ours. So look at the opportunity in the world. But, but they're consuming different kinds of beverages. Yes, and we have I mean, those. you've got a very large battleship that you have to move, I think, from full calorie toward low calorie because of the concerns about health around the of world, the not just the United States. Of the 3,000 beverages we have now, products, 1,000 of them are already no calorie or low calorie. So we have moved, and we will continue to move. Last 20 years, 20x increase in the number of products for us. 20 years, 20 times. We had 150 products, now we have 3,000 plus products. Mm. So, and if you look at the next 10 years, 3,500 will look like a small number. That's the way the world is moving, and that's the way we want to move ahead of that trend. Of those products, traditionally, you've been more in an acquisition mode rather than development. Seeing that the market is taking a downturn, funding is difficult, look where the equity markets are, do you see 2016 as a year of acquisition for you? I wouldn't call 2016 specifically as a year of acquisition. If that we see opportunity, like we have in 15, we had in 14, we will buy some bolt on, make some bolt on acquisitions. However, of the 3,500 products, 20x increase since 20 years, I'd say 80, 85 percent of them have been completely. Uh, uh, are brands that we have developed from scratch, that we didn't buy them. And if you took us inside all of those homes you're talking about, all of those families consuming beverages, please help us understand what the U.S. economy looks like from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Because here in Davos, there's a very big disconnect to what we see when we look at the equity markets and what we see when we look at the huge popularity candidates like Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders have gotten. Well, help us well, understand, what does America think? Well, look. <laughs> What we see as a consumer products business is that this financial contagion, it has, has not passed over the wall to the consumer with f fiercely in any way or form. That hasn't happened. Can it happen? Anything can happen. I can't predict what will happen. But all I can tell you is that across the world, there is a lot of unease in the financial markets, but at the same time, uh, there are some benefits that countries are reaping because of the c lower commodities. Countries that don't produce oil are actually doing better now because of the much lower price of oil. Their, 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 their whole fiscal picture and the budgets in those countries are going to look much better in 2016 for the full year when you actually compare it to 2015. So, yeah, there's puts and takes. <laughs> and can you benefit, can you actually target your investments Make sure that you have a flexible plan, execute really well, and um, actually it's not as bad as what the general picture would lead you to believe. So I want to make sure we talk about why specifically you're in Davos. At least one of the reasons is you've headed up an initiative for the World Economic Forum on employment skills and human capital. Tell us about what that is. What that is is there's 200 million people unemployed in the world. Um, rates, that, that number is going up, unfortunately. It's not going down. So the net increase in technology jobs is not making up for the loss in white collar uh, jobs, which is going to in the next year is the, based on the recent human capital report of the World Economic Forum, one million more jobs net will be shed a year going forward. And I think that number is conservative. So uh, three years ago, uh, as head of the International Business Council of the World Economic Forum, I convened a group of city mayors because I thought going subnational would be a lot better. City mayors are basically like CEOs. They, they do much more than talk. And a lot of we brought together CEOs and we brought together a lot of NGOs, ILO, universities, to come up with a set of practical solutions to deal with youth unemployment specifically and with women un unemployment. They're going to ask you to create jobs, Mutar. Exactly. Mutar, thank <laughs> you right. so much. Anyway, Mutar anyway. Kent, Coca-Cola CEO and chairman, and one dapper guy. How about that hat? Thank you.